in the places where Biden needed to win, like you just said, in those swing states and not anywhere else. Mm. Welcome, everybody, to the U.S. Grace Force Podcast. I'm Doug Barry, along with Father Richard Heilman, my good friend. And we have a great guest tonight, Father Frank Pavone. Before we get into uh, Father's wisdom, let's start with a prayer. Father Richard, I'll give this to you. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. All right, thank take it, my brother. All right, thank you, Father Heilman. Hey, everybody, just real quick, I want to thank all our patrons out there, people who support this U.S. Grace Force podcast. We've been inundated with tremendous feedback, great comments from many of you out there, our patrons. You've been big supporters as well financially to help keep this rolling. We've had some great shows lately, especially in these times right now with things so tumultuous and so upside down. And as bad as it's been, we've had some just wonderful support from you all. So we thank you for that. If you're interested in becoming a patron, click the link in the description, pray about it, and decide if you feel you're called to help us out with a few dollars or more and just keep this ball rolling, keep this machine moving. We've got to reach more lives, more souls. And that's the goal of the U.S. Grace Force. Also, don't forget to check out our gear page. Got the U.S. Grace Force uh, official hoodie here right now. And, of course, nice. Father's always got great stuff on tonight. He's got a Packer sweatshirt on. So that one doesn't count. We don't sell that. <laughs> but check out the u.s grace force gear page and that also is a great way to help support the work that we do with that we're going to go right way right away because we don't have him for very long tonight i'm so thankful father frank that you were willing to jump in and last minute i texted you earlier today and you were so gracious we appreciate you giving us the time tonight it is always a joy to be with with both of you uh, doug and, and and father heilman really it's an encouragement to me and so i was more than happy to to come on with you well, I appreciate that. If you could, just for the first part, can we start by just giving a brief overview from your perspective? Uh, we know that you've, you've had great association with, with President Trump and this whole, this whole battle of the election that we're undergoing right now. Yeah. Give everybody an assessment of kind of where things are. Well, the president is, is really, really convinced uh, that uh, there have been irregularities in this election. And look, we have to understand something he has always said. He said, it's not about me. It's not my campaign. It's about us. It's about our campaign. It's about our country. It's about the things we believe as, as Christians. It's about the value we hold as Americans. And he really believes that. He doesn't see himself just fighting for himself here. Uh, he sees himself fighting for us. What's at issue here is not just whether he wins a second term. What's at issue here is do we have fair elections going on in this country? Uh, because unless we, you know, half the country thinks we don't right now. Uh, I mean, and literally half the country, as opinion polls recently have shown, think that this election was rigged, that it was falsified. Now, why would people think that? It's not just because they're sore losers. Um, it's because there is plenty of evidence uh, that something went wrong. And uh, I, I, the evidence is of various different kinds. Um, some of it is uh, vote, like right after I finish with talking with all of you here tonight, I'm going on another live broadcast where I'll be interviewing a voter whom I've known for years. And she, uh, she cast her vote this year in Florida for President Trump. She is a registered independent. And she used to live in Michigan. 15 years ago, she lived in Michigan. And uh, she decided just to, you know, check on the Board of Elections up in Michigan if they still had her information. You know what they, she called them. You know what, she, you know what they told her? Yes, mm -hmm. thank you for requesting an absentee ballot. We received your, your ballot and you know, your vote was cast. And they had oh her goodness. as a Democrat. Oh. Uh, she never registered as a Democrat in her life. And she had a registered as a Democrat. Wow. And asked her vote. You said, now, I, you know, I mean, wait, wait, what is this? So now, uh, you know, and people might say, oh, well, you know, that's one instance. In a nutshell, the, the Trump team, uh, their attorneys, their, their, their legal team has enough 
complaints and, and evidences of irregularity to more than compensate for the margin of victory that Joe Biden has been counted to have in the states that are in dispute, which are six, Michigan and Wisconsin, Pennsylvania and uh, Georgia, Nevada and Arizona. Uh, there are in each of these states different things going on. Some of it has to do with, like my friend, voters who have come forward and said, hey, I got, I've got a story to tell here. There's something, something's wrong here. Uh, others are election workers who are coming forward and telling us they were told to do things that they know are illegal and out of order. Election workers have been coming forward. And the other people who have been coming forward are observers. Well, people have to realize is that, especially with all these mail-in ballots, when ballots are being counted, uh, law requires throughout the 50 states that observers be there to see how these ballots are being handled. Ballots should never be uh, uh, counted in secret or without another pair of eyes keeping things honest. Well, observers who were appointed and, and, and ready to go uh, on election night to watch the counting of the ballots were in various places systematically um, uh, uh, told to stay away. I mean, it's totally, it's like, what do you stay away? You have something to hide? I'm supposed to be here to observe the counting. And they were kept from seeing what was going on. Um, the counting mysteriously stopped in these key states. Okay. President Trump had a strong uh, uh, lead as election night uh, was, was progressing. In the middle of the night, the, the voting, the counting mysteriously stopped. And then loads of ballots began to appear in the early hours of the morning. And they were like 90% in favor of Biden. Um, there were statistical anomalies that are just unexplainable. One expert just a few hours ago uh, testified in Arizona that his analysis of the way that the vote in Maricopa County went, when you take into account the registered Republicans, registered Democrats, registered independents, and they did these, the, the guy is an expert in this kind of forensic analysis of patterns. And he said they did this computer analysis of how the vote went in that county and said the only way it, 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 it could have gone the, the way that, that it did is if the votes for, for Biden, each vote counted for more than one vote. I mean, they said it wasn't, they're, they're looking at this and studying this stuff and they're saying, no, there's, there's too, too many things here that are not explained and some things not explainable. And this is why the president is saying, look, we have serious, serious issues here that we believe that for the sake of every American, these questions need to be answered. Yeah, and you, you just look at it and you go, it doesn't make sense because um, it, all these anomalies happen in these battleground states, these swing states, right? They, well, now, they, yes, right. Yeah. And, so, then, it, and then you look at the down ballot and, right. you know, it was Republicans who won in, in in a lot of these areas, and and they didn't. It was it, there were so many ballots they're finding out that just had Biden, but no down ballot. Uh, uh, That's a strange thing, isn't it? Biden only ballots. A lot of these ballots appeared. It's never happened before on 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 early those early hours of November fourth. Yeah. And here's the other thing: the point you the thing point you just made. Where are his coattails? If he if he is supposed to have won now more votes than any president has ever won. Yeah. Where are his coattails? Why did Republicans fend off Democrat efforts to take out senators? Why did Republicans gain win in all the, the toss up right. for the House, right? right? Why did they win on the state level? Democrats failed right. to, to make inroads on the state level. And we're supposed to believe, what are we supposed to believe? That people, they voted for Biden for president and then they voted for Republicans down right. there? It, it doesn't make sense. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, Here's yeah. another thing that doesn't make sense. Biden underperformed Hillary Clinton in every city across the country. We know that Democrats do better in the, in the urban areas. Republicans do better in the rural counties. Okay, so in the major metropolitan areas, clear across the country, Biden did worse then Hillary Clinton, yeah. except for Philadelphia, Atlanta, Detroit, and Milwaukee. Right. Four areas right. that are known to have voter corruption and precisely in the places where Biden needed to win, like you just said, in those swing states. Right. 
and not anywhere else. Mm. Something is something's fishy about that. So, so where does this go from here with regards to, I mean, obviously, you know, you get Giuliani and Sidney Powell and others who are trying to make this case. Um, what is the process now with the amount of time that we have? There's two things that there's two things that, that have to happen. First of all, the courts are being asked to look at certain constitutional issues. Uh, for example, equal protection argument that um, I, 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 we have, for example, the situation in Pennsylvania, okay, where in Democrat, certain Democrat counties, when the ballot was received, that was invalid because the voter forgot to fill in certain information on the, on the outer envelope. The Democrat voter got a, a text or an email and said, hey, there's a problem with your ballot. Uh, let's fix it so that your ballot can count. The folks, the voters in the Republican counties did not get the benefit of that text or phone. Oh. They were not given the opportunity to correct their ballot. This is a matter of equal justice under law. It's a constitutional issue. Another constitutional issue that the courts can, can deal with, and by, by making decisions now, if we have courageous judges that make these decisions, they can throw out hundreds of thousands of ballots, um, would be this issue. Like take again, Pennsylvania as an example. Hundreds of thousands of ballots came in after the legal deadline of 8 p.m. on election night. Now, that's a matter of state law. The U.S. Constitution says the states decide how the elections are going to be conducted in their state. Pennsylvania decided 8 p.m. on election night. That's it. Any ballot that comes in after that, we don't count it. So hundreds of thousands of ballots did come in after that. The governor and the secretary of state, were both Democrats, said, oh, you will just, yeah, we'll accept them anyway. Yeah. The constitutional issue is they don't have the authority to change the law. In Pennsylvania. So this is where the Supreme Court can intervene and say, okay, wait a second, the law is the law. Our constitution says the state decides, Pennsylvania did decide, there's no authority the governor has to change that. All those ballots may not be counted. So there are constitutional issues. The president can win if courts decide these constitutional issues and invalidate the ballots that should be invalidated. The other thing that can happen is that even though people are hearing, well, certain states have certified the election, listen, these certifications are not final. They can be reversed if, an, if uh, 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 problems are, are, are shown to exist. And we're not talking about a criminal trial here. There doesn't have to be evidence uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. There only has to be the preponderance of the evidence, okay? It's a lower standard. It's a civil suit. And the civil suit is saying, again, that, uh, wait a minute, you know, ballots were handled in the wrong way. And so the state legislatures, and this is what we're seeing happen today in Arizona, there was a hearing the other day in Pennsylvania, there are more hearings scheduled. The state legislators can say, hey, listen, we're going to take this matter into our own hands. It's not the supervisors of elections or the governors. We're the ones responsible for choosing. Because remember what's happening here, let's just take a step back. The states are choosing the electors. We don't vote. We feel like we're voting for the president directly, but we're not. We're choosing in each state who the electors are who are going to meet on December 14th to vote for the president. And then on January 6th, the Congress convenes in a joint session to receive the votes of the electors. And then they officially count them and declare the winner. At any stage of that process, objections can be raised. So if the state legislators, first of all, and this is an action item, people should contact their state legislators, especially in those six states that we mentioned, and say, do your job, fix this, find out if anything is going is going wrong, and do not certify fraudulent results. Do not certify, get to the bottom of what's happening. And that's what these, these legislators are doing now. They're listening, they're listening to the evidence, they're trying to get to the bottom of what happened. And then they can act in their own, at their own discretion to certify the, um, uh, the electors. So these are, the, these are some of the paths of victory. And again, people should understand, the Trump campaign has enough, the, the kind of evidence that it has right now that it's presenting in these hearings, covers enough ballots to actually change the results and overcome mm. Biden's uh, margin of victory. You know, Father, I, I don't know where you're at, but I'm so sick and tired of, you know, four years of a Russian collusion nonsense and impeachment nonsense and uh, the collusion with uh, mainstream media and, and big tech. And uh, it, it's just, 
and and this isn't after a, a person. This is after us. That's this is right. After, this is after we, the people who do love the United States of America, who do love God. Okay, and, and so this has just been ramrodded through, and I think especially, at least in my est estimation, that this year, 2020, I, I've been calling them arrogant. You know, just get up in your face and tell you, you will do this and you will sit down and you will shut up. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, this is a this is not the Democratic Party of John F. Kennedy. Okay, this has become something far more fierce and far more, uh, uh, it's evil, in my estimation. And, uh, and what they're yeah. trying to press through right now. So what do you think, what's at stake here, Father? What you, do you, I don't know if you're where I'm at, but... What's at stake here? Yeah, uh, Father, uh, I think you said it perfectly. I agree with you 100%. And, and what's at stake here really is whether or not we have a functioning uh, republic here. Because the election, you know, what, what's at stake here is whether we're going to be a people of law and order. I find it very interesting that the party that can't seem to distinguish between a peaceful protest and a violent riot in our right. city. Right. Right? And who can't distinguish between a violent act that kills a baby and right. reproductive rights and constitutional yep. choices. Right. Or who cannot or doesn't want to distinguish between an illegal immigrant and a legal immigrant whom we welcome with open arms. Likewise can't distinguish or doesn't care to distinguish between a valid vote or an invalid vote. I want to hear these Democrats. Here, here's the question I have for these, these Biden supporting people who just say to us, oh, well, you're not, just not accepting the results of the election. You know, uh, Biden won, you know, accept it. Oh, we are oh, really? Well, here's my question for you then. If 600,000 ballots in, in Pennsylvania came in too late, according to state law, do you think they should be counted or not? Right. And, and, and I want them to answer questions like that. Or, or if you have in another place, if you have 100,000 ballots that, the, you know, the signatures don't match or they came in without any signatures. So we don't know who sent them in. Should they be counted? If the law says there has to be a signature, should they be counted or should they not be? And, 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 and it seems to me, Father, these folks, they're not even, they don't even have the willingness to think in this particular way. Thinking. No particular way shows, and I think there's a spiritual dimension to this here, it shows a certain um, reverence for honesty and for law and order. Right. Um, and I think that's what's at stake here is that, you know, nobody's, and we have half the country right now. Uh, Rasmussen came out the, the other day with a, with a poll saying, you know, for, fully 47% of Americans think the election was rigged against President Trump. That's not a healthy place to be at. Mm. Future, That's forty-seven percent. Right? When the media is telling you you're 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 an idiot for thinking that, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, exactly, right, yeah. right, right. So this is not a healthy place to be at for the integrity of our election and the confidence in this process moving forward. I mean, we have elections going on right now for U.S. Senate in Georgia, and this is another key priority. I mean, aside from contacting our state legislators, like I said earlier, we got to be active in Georgia. There's two U.S. Senate seats there that are going to determine control of the U.S. Senate. And I mean, here we are in the midst of not trusting our electoral system. And meanwhile, we have to carry out a crucially important election. Yeah. And this is, you know, here's my, my point is this. This is not even just about whether President Trump gets a second term. This has to be whatever happened in this election. And there are a lot more anomalies than we have time to even mention here. Whatever happened, we have got to get to the bottom of it whether it's before inauguration day or after. If it takes a year to figure this out, right. we have to get to the bottom. We can't let this drop. We cannot let it drop because uh, uh, our whole system is at stake. Yep. And, Go ahead, Doug. No, no, you, Father. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that I, I heard uh, an interview with uh, General Flynn today, and he just mm -hmm. calls it, he calls it treason. I mean, it's nothing yes. sort of treason what's going on. That's right. I agree. Yeah. Really, it really, you know, this is, <laughs> uh, um, I, I don't know if you saw also uh, the a actor, John Voight. Uh, just yeah. Before, oh, yeah. And yeah. He can, I mean, he, oh, my goodness, he's been saying, and he said, you know what? He said, this is as serious a, a fight in our country right now as, as we had in the Civil War. 
exactly. Uh, you know, and, it, and, 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 and people, again, might think, oh, you guys are exaggerating. Why not? No, these are the principles on which our, our nation rests, and they must be defended in every generation, no matter what the kind of attacks are. Well, and on that point, Father, because I know we don't have you for a lot longer here, what, what, I mean, what I would say advice you give to the people. I mean, we, we know we need to pray, we need to fast, and that's critical. That's essential that we get many, many people on board with that. Is yes. there anything else that any of us can be doing that anybody can do, the average person out there? Absolutely. First of all, choose carefully your sources for being informed. Okay. You know, broadcasts like this. Oh, yeah. My own, uh, my own uh, commentary online, FR Frank Pavone is my address for my YouTube, Twitter, uh, Parler, and, and Instagram, FR Frank Pavone. Stay connected. You'll get updates on all these matters. Um, uh, we broadcast every day. Newsmax, uh, One American News Network, you know, a lot of these, these, these networks are now, you know, they're, they're taking the audience now from Fox. People are so fed up with Fox News and, and sure. not mention the rest of the mainstream. Media. Keep informed from the right sources. On Twitter, go to Team Trump. You'll get daily updates and videos. You'll learn exactly what's going on, what the latest progress is. Team Trump. And on, on Facebook, it's official Team Trump. Those are the addresses you want to connect with. Uh, and, and, and listen, what we also have to do, uh, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but let me reemphasize it, Doug, as an action item. Um, people need to contact the state legislators. In I just put that up on my Facebook page. Oh, good. All Thank you, Father. Yes. How to contact them. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Yeah. Those six states, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, uh, Arizona, and Nevada. And tell them, do your constitutional job. Please let this be fair and, and a fair election. And then, uh, you know, the, the Georgia elections, I mean, Doug and Father, you know, so many people worked so hard throughout this election season and uh, it's not finished yet because we need the Senate, especially if, if the White House were to be uh, 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 under Biden and the, I mean, the House is, is under the Democrats. You know, the Senate is, is the only safeguard there to, uh, to the Democrats enacting all these radical policies that they want to enact. That would be an important safeguard. And it's winnable. It's there in Georgia. And those two Senate races, even if you're not in Georgia, you can help. Uh, the, uh, the effort, and we have a special website called ProLifeVoteGeorgia.com, ProLifeVoteGeorgia.com. So okay. those are my practical pieces of advice. Along there's, there's talk about in Georgia that the, the, they're, they're going to boycott, the, the, the conservatives are going to boycott the election. I actually think the left put, is planting that thought. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. hey, we heard the conservatives are going to boycott, you know, so they can get that going viral. And, yeah. and everybody goes, yeah, yeah, it looks like we're going to boycott it. Yeah. Don't that, boycott the election. And then you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're shooting yourself. In, exactly. I, that's a good, I think that's a good insight, Father. That would be like, just like them to kind of make I, that up. I'm sure, you know, given everything they've already done, I'm sure they planted that. You know? <laughs> exactly. exactly. All the conservatives are talking about boycott. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, right. Well, Father, thank you so much for being with us. We know you got to run. Uh, but, uh, and thanks for all the work you've done, Priest for Life, everything. Yeah. Um, you're a mighty, mighty warrior. You're my inspiration, all of our inspiration. And Amen. so thank you. And God bless. Well, listen, the two of you are as well. You're an inspiration to me. Keep up all the great work. And listen, we are working side by side here. Absolutely. I look forward to getting together with you uh, many more times in the near future. Awesome. awesome. Thank thanks, you, Father. Father. God bless. God bless you. Welcome back, everyone. Listen, Doug and I just want to take this time to, uh, first of all, thank Father Frank Pavone. I mean, that guy's amazing. Um, we were talking about him <laughs> off camera here. And he everything that he's doing and just how dynamic he is and how uh, passionate he is, especially about the whole pro-life movement. I mean, he's been leading the way with Priest for Life for many, many years. And so, again, we want to thank Father Frank Pavone for be, taking the time to be with us. But uh, Doug and I thought we'd take the remainder of this time just to give our, our input into what we think is going on and, and really what's at stake. And I, you know, I was saying, Doug, that um, I've been equating it lately, and, and that's uh, people should know that um, Monday we started what's called Operation Overlord 2.0. Okay. And what that is, it's just it's, it's, it's uh, 
building upon what the Allied forces did in World War II, and that was the actually the um, code name uh, Operation Overlord for D Day, June 6, 1944. Uh, but characters that were involved in all that in the spiritual realm. Uh, one of the big one ones that, and he's my favorite, is Saint Maximilian Kolbe, and and what he was doing during that time is, I think, J Doug, you and I are taking inspiration from uh, Saint Maximilian Kolbe because w one of his primary missions was to push back on on falsehood, on lies, the propaganda that was going on at that time. So what did he do? He picked up on the best of new media of his day. Okay. Mm -hmm printing press primarily he was actually in the he had in the works he was starting a movie studio um uh before he was uh, uh you know taken off to auschwitz and and eventually put to death but um but he, he just felt like we we got to get on this we we've got to get about using any tool at our disposal to counter the propaganda that was going on. I, I quoted, actually, uh, this is one of the reasons I was kicked off Facebook. I quoted Joseph Goebbels, okay? And, and it's it's a quote, I don't have it in front of me, but basically he said, if you tell people a circle is a square long enough, okay, you, you just keep repeating that, they'll begin to believe it. And I got kicked off Facebook for that. So that's got to tell you something about Facebook, right? They don't want you to know that that's the exact propaganda that big tech and, and uh, mainstream media is using right now. They just hammer you, hammer you, hammer you with all this stuff. It's false, okay? It's propaganda. And, and so I've been saying, Doug, that, that we're living in a time right now that either rivals or even exceeds what was going on in 1930s Germany, you know, with all the, and what was coming in. And again, I, I make the same equation was Marxism and then Nazism or fascism, right? Well, that's exactly what's coming in right now under different titles, is Marxism and fascism. And, and the Marxism and fascism's mortal enemy is religion, okay? And so they need to do all they can to put us down, to, to silence us, uh, to, to, to push us aside. So we're in mortal combat right now, and I contend that it might be as severe as it ever has been. Yeah. And so this is what's at stake right now. And so you have, uh, and I, I put it this way once, you, you, everybody wants to accuse us of being political. Well, no, one party is opening the door, okay, and offering, you know, welcome gifts for Marxism and fascism. And the other party is standing athwart this movement of Marxism and fascism that's coming in. So what you do is you try to build a uh, force to be reckoned with. We've got to be united. And so that's what we've been doing, okay? If, if, if you're on my side, and, and my side is God's side, okay? And so if you're on my side, then God love you, get on board. And that's, again, what at least strong and true conservatives have been doing. They've been saying, we love our country. We, uh, we love the uh, freedom of religion, okay? We love that, that people do have high standards of living, morals, ethics, principles, right? Religion. I mean, you know who else uh, knows this is, um, what's his name in uh, Russia? Stalin? Uh, Vladimir Putin. Oh, Putin, yeah, the current, right. Yeah, he actually pushes religion in his country because he knows it'll raise the game of his soldiers huh. because they'll live by these morals and ethics, and that's a good thing, okay? Mm. Uh, he, but uh, he wants to raise the character of, of, of his soldiers. So anyway, but the point is, is that uh, we're facing a possible bum rush, much like, you know, Nazism, and, and communism, Marxism, was coming across Western Europe and taking over that and, 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 and on its way to us over in America. So what did they do? They got an allied force together, okay, to, 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 to push back on, on this, this, uh, this movement coming across Western Europe. Uh, but the other thing I point out, and I'll close with this, and I'll hand it over to you, Doug, but uh, 
what we're doing with Operation Overlord 2.0 is we're saying, okay, what did uh, Colby do about that? What did Father Colby do about that back then? He called people to, first of all, take the rosary up. Okay, he was a big proponent of that. But he added two uh, very powerful weapons to, to stand against this, this satanic evil that was coming across. What was it? It was Marian consecration was the, mm -hmm. was the one. He devoted himself to get everybody as possible consecrated. He called it total consecration too. But uh, that's uh, to Jesus through Mary, right? And so uh, Marian consecration, and he came up with a nine-day preparation. It's just awesome. If you haven't seen it yet, look it up. Or I can tell you in a second here where to go. But uh, so, and then he said, Let's take that the all the amazing graces that come from wearing the miraculous medal. Okay, the power of the miraculous medal. And he said, to as a sign of your consecration, promise to wear that miraculous medal. I actually wear one too. I wear it on what's called a four-way scapular medal. This, this is an awesome medal, a four-way scapular medal, uh, because it has so many devotions on on this thing, but it also has a miraculous medal and it also uh counts for wearing the brown scapular so uh that's what we're calling people to do we're doing the maximum saint maximian colby thing with this operation overlord 2.1 and what are we doing we're saying that we're throwing a, as much supernatural grace okay lit up catholics uh supernatural grace at this this demon these that's that's coming and looking to take us over i am not sitting down and I, and I don't want to make up something on my own. I want to say, Lord, how did you show us how to do this? Well, at this point, I'm looking at a, a very similar situation to Western Europe and, and then eventually D-Day, uh, Normandy, France, uh, June 6, 1944, and what Maximilian and Kobe did during that time. So Operation Overlord 2.0, you can find all this at usgraceforce.com. Please join ranks with us. Yeah, and Father, I, I think you, everything you said, I 100% agree right on with all of it. And the image, of course, that you've used for that is the famous image of the storming of the beaches in Normandy. Right. You know, where you've got the the, the door dropping on the Higgins boat and the men are yeah. running out, you know, and it's it's a perfect image. It shows what happened, you know, and I, I, I think back to that time. We, we've talked about this in past episodes when... Admiral um, Yamamoto uh, said after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, he said, I fear all we've done is awaken a sleeping giant and fill them with a terrible resolve. Right. And that attitude has to be in here. And, and for people who are really struggling with the bigger picture of what's happening here, even the whole thing with the virus, the election, I don't even see this as this isn't all of it. This, there's a global effort here. We've used the term uh, last week. We had uh, Michael Hitchborn on before that with Father Altman on before that Father Ripperger on and, and I don't remember if Father Ripperger mentioned it, but we know that Father Altman and Father, or, excuse me, and Michael Hitchborn did um, about the Great Reset. And this right. Great Reset is a bigger part. It's it's a more complete picture of what's going on right now um, with the election and the virus. And if you doubt this at all, you need to look at what certain leaders of nations, like Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, or even Prince Charles. He's not the head of the of the UK, but he is definitely a key figure in royalty there. You know, you've got uh, John Kerry has talked about this. Uh, you know, Joe Biden has been at some of these World Economic Forum meetings and been close buddies with people like Klaus Schwab, who's head of the Economic Forum, World Economic Forum. And they refer, Klaus Schwab in video, you see him say this, hear them say this right there in video. Uh, Prince Charles has talked about this. Justin Trudeau has talked about this, that the COVID-19 crisis has presented a perfect opportunity, a golden opportunity, a great chance to further their great reset plans right. to restructure the economy worldwide to restructure what they call a societal contract. Okay. Worldwide. They say that, in fact, there was a propaganda piece put out and we'll get a couple of clips of it up here on it right now. And this is an image that came out in 2016 and it, it look, look at what it says here. It says, imagine by 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. And then yeah. it goes on to say that it goes on to say that, get this father, it goes on to say that, and you'll eat much less meat. And in fact, meat will become a treat. Okay. Not a staple, not part of our normal diet and it'll help the environment and make you healthier. So what we're talking about here is 
what we're seeing with this election issue and what's happening in our country. And President Trump just got in the way of this entire effort. All right. And they knew yep. this. And he is he's been a stumbling block for them. And he wasn't playing ball. He wouldn't play ball. Right. He wasn't playing nice in the sandbox with him. Right. And so their idea is we've got to get rid of him somehow. So they spent the last four years with yeah. the Russian collusion stuff, the impeachment stuff, and all the kind of lies that they came up with, spent millions of tax dollars to go after him, and they couldn't get anything to stick. So what they have to do? Rig an election. Right. And as Father Frank said, the anomalies, the oddities of this are too off the chain, too numerous to just say, oh, that's just a couple of odd moments here or there. Way too much is off with this. But the bigger picture is the Great Reset. And if people, if, look, I just, I plead with the people out there, if you're not looking into this or being aware of this, you've got to look more into this. Now, I've got a video I just put out at the time we record this a week, about a week ago, and we'll have a link in the description. And it's on the Great Reset. It's about 17 minutes long, and it addresses what we're talking about. You're going to see Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, and Prince Charles, and Klaus Schwab. You're going to hear them talk about this opportunity that they say we have to help people accept more readily other changes that they want to bring to the world. And, you know, Father, we've talked about this off and on with, with everything going on with this virus. And, you know, the mask issue, for one thing, is I'm not judging anybody if they feel they want to wear a mask. But the threats and the fear and everything that is coming from it is really, is really too much. It's really overwhelming. And we've gotten to a point now, Father, and at the time we record this, I just saw this in the news earlier today, that airlines now, the airline system, um, is going to move towards a a, you need to prove your vaccination before you can get on a plane flight now. Uh -huh. All right. Qantas has already said that they're going to do that with international flights, that you won't be able, you will not be able to get on an international flight once vaccines are readily available. You will not be able to get on a, on a Qantas international flight without proof of your vaccination. And now they're talking about this becoming more, more across the board with all airlines, international and domestic flights. And this is going to, this is, you and I have talked about this many times. This is going to come to even going to the grocery store. This is going to come to going to work, going to school. Uh, anytime you go to anywhere public, they're going to try to structure this and set this up. If we do not stand the ground, first and foremost, spiritually, but also, Father, it takes courage, just like it takes courage, as you know, because you keep getting thrown in Facebook jail, you know, <laughs> even to post something anymore. And people are afraid of the cancel culture. We have got to not be afraid of these things. And we've also got to be ready to back each other, support each other, and help each other if and when it comes to that. Because this could become pretty serious with people getting canceled, fired, losing work, whatever. In order to stand for our freedoms and ultimately religious freedom, because this is something, again, that's come up over and over in our programs over the past several months, is the church is being locked down. There is a strong effort to continue to lock them down. Unfortunately, we've got many of our church leaders who seem complicit, or at least you, they're just struggling with having the courage. They're dealing with the, with the health officials of their state, whatever it may be. Ultimately, it is resulting in many people not having access to the sacraments. And I know you as a priest, Father, that, that's something that pains you very much about the fact that, that we've had these restrictions on even the numbers of people that can attend the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Confessions have been cut back for many people, people who have died not being able to receive you know, the final sacrament and so forth. This is just, this is devastating stuff. And it's creating so much more pain and angst in us. And it's, it's, it's undermining so much of the beauty of the individual soul, heart, and individual person. Um, the, these are things we have got to stand strong against and fight for because people are hurting bad when it comes to especially these areas. Doug, we're being called to martyrdom uh, at this time. And I, I, I don't think we're yet at a red martyrdom where people are going to get killed for standing up for what's right and good and holy. But I think we're definitely at the po point of white martyrdom. And white martyrdom just me means they'll destroy you, your person, or your uh, reputation, your job and everything. And in the modern lingo, what they call that is the chilling effect. And that has been so effective in, um, in uh, a, a way uh, to, to intimidate people um, I got it up here. I'm going to read the definition. A discouraging or deterring effect on the behavior of an individual or, or group, especially the inhibition of the exercise of a constitutional right, such as freedom of speech, through fear or legal action. You know, people are, I, I've been saying these guys are bullies, and yeah. they found a very effective tool 
in this chilling effect. You will, you will do what we say or else, right? You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your reputation. You're standing in the community. You're going to lose everything. And frankly, it's, it's very effective on our bishops right now. They're, they're, they're following along and, and just doing what this, uh, um, uh, and again, Marxist, fascist movement wants it to do, the ruling class, right? They're doing exactly what they want them to do because why? Because if you don't do what we're, we, if you don't follow and toe the, toe the line, you know, the money stream is going to stop and all kinds of other bad things are going to happen. And I, I, I've, I've met people and talked to people uh, who are in leadership positions and, you know, for the sake of unity and harmony. You know, well, what are they saying there? That go ahead and bully us and, and we'll go ahead and allow you to do that and we'll follow uh, you know, your, your agenda because we don't want division. We don't want disharmony. Uh, and that's what's going on right now. There, we're, the, all this stuff is being ushered in right now and uh, it's being allowed to happen for the sake of harmony for the sake of unity. Yeah, you know, Father, this this reminds me a lot of, of an addict situation. And I know this because I grew up in a family where you know, my father was an alcoholic. And the things that you are willing to do to keep some idea of peace, right? because the addict has an ability to manipulate, threaten, yep. intimidate. Sometimes it's violent. Sometimes it's not. My father was never violent, but he had a way to manipulate. Yep really really twist things and that pressure causes many people just out of just the, the sheer want of just give me some sense of peace and to them peace is simply the absence of the intimidation right and the threat and and that's a dangerous attitude we have to understand that true peace as saint augustine talks about is being in the order of god now being in the order of god does not mean that that you you give into some sort of manifestation of evils, manipulative threats and fear. This is not the order of God. The order of God is we have to have the courage to stand up to that because there's one way these things have to flow, and that's from God. And so giving into threats and manipulation, giving into fear, and we but you and I both seen this on Facebook, even or any social media, you put a post out there and people's comments sometimes are getting so much more horrendous over things like you're not wearing a mask. You must want people to die. Right. Right. That, that is one of the most insane things. And how did we get here? All this propaganda that has come from, I agree, the fascist communist mindset, that Marxist movement, that global effort to just undermine freedom and remove God from the equation. In fact, Prince Charles, and this is in my YouTube video, people want to find the actual quote. He says it in there. You can hear him say it. The lesson that we must learn is that nature must be at the heart of how we operate when we do this whole sustainable goal, great reset. Nature must be at the heart. Not God, nature. Yeah. So again, it's a removing of God from the picture. Take God out of the equation. We don't need him. We don't want him. Shut down the churches. Do it through fear and intimidation. When I hear people say, we're closing down the churches, shutting down mass and the sacraments, because we care about others. Unbelievable. Right. It just, it, it, it to no end drives me crazy that this is where people are, that we've accepted this. And you're right, Father, a lot of this is this fear and intimidation just is what's, what's masterminding behind so much of it. Yeah. It, and what, what the, what the uh, enemy banks on is what's called the um, uh, news cycle, mm. because we have such a sh short attention span. Yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, how can we look back on this coup d'etat in the past four years, uh, a fake Russia collusion, uh, impeachment, um, uh, everything that's, that's gone on, and, 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 uh, and now, you know, a stolen election. And, you know, you, you, just, you just go, you, you put all this together, this is a coup d'etat. There's no way around it. When you put all of this together, when you recall exactly, this is what they've been up to in full collusion. Media, big tech, everyone is on this is colluding with each other to get their agenda, to get in power, to take control. And and in, in, unless we continue to remind people, wait a minute, you know, look at this, look at that. 
you know, uh, look at what they're doing over here. Oh yeah, I, I guess you're right. Yeah, but but otherwise, you know, it's it's we just move on to our worldly lives and and uh, have nothing to do with it. Uh, but this is the time, Doug. We cannot do that any longer. We have to stand up to these bullies, and yeah. and not allow them to uh, to use this chilling effect any longer, and and to intimidate us any longer. And and I, I don't know about you, but I've had enough of this. And I'm I'm doing everything that there is possible to um, to to say no. I'm not taking this anymore. Right, right. Yeah, I say I agree the same way. I mean, I, I to the point where I mean, we have to make the decisions. And I got to say this to people: you've got to be ready to make these decisions. Where are you going to draw the line? If they come door to door, they start putting the threats. You can't go shop for groceries without taking a vaccine. The vaccine has had a lot of problems mentioned about it. A lot of people are saying, don't take it. I'm not going to judge anybody on, on whether or not you're going to take it. But remember that some of these vaccine strains are, are, they use aborted fetuses. This has been something that's come out in a couple. But main thing is that they're talking about human DNA and animal DNA being mixed in these vaccines and even potentially nanotechnology where they're going to be able to start monitoring you biometrically. And this is not conspiracy theory stuff. This is being talked about from medical professionals who have since been largely silenced. And that's been going on from the beginning. Yeah. But again, remember, this is, this is a virus that is a 99.95 approximate survivability rate. And, and, you know, and I've talked to many people down here where I am in Thailand who've had the virus, mm -hmm. several who've had the virus and said it was like a cold. You know, that's not everybody. We know that. But let's get past this constant fear. In fact, uh, this Dr. Deborah Burks, I know you're familiar with her father um, from the White House, you know, medical staff and all working with Fauci. There was a video just a couple of days ago that came out and she says in the interview, um, the newscaster, meet the press or whoever it is, face the nation, one of these people. And she says in the interview that if you or your family traveled over Thanksgiving, if you even traveled, these are her words, if you traveled, you need to assume that you were exposed and that you are now infected and you need to get tested and you should stay away from anyone in your family who has comorbidities or is 65 or older. Yeah. It was a blanket statement though. It was a blanket statement translation. And I put a post on Facebook on this one. It was a translation, fear, 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 more fear, even more fear, no hope, only fear. Because if you traveled, you have to assume you were exposed and that you're now infected. Right. What kind of a way to live is that? Right. I mean, Father, this is this is insanity at every level. And of course, on top of that, before Thanksgiving, all the pressure that was coming down in certain states like Oregon, California, Washington, New York, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, don't have any more than five people, 10 people, six people, whatever the numbers were, okay, trying to get law enforcement to enforce this. In Oregon, they talked about 30 days in jail and a $1,250 fine if you had more than six people in your house. All right, this is everything you're talking about, Father, about fascism and communism and Marxism and all this. This is exactly what's happening, and it's getting people used to it. So when someone like Prince Charles or Klaus Schwab was the one, head of the World Economic Forum, who came out and said that the COVID, it's German, I'm not going to try to do the accent, <laughs> but he says that the COVID crisis has presented them with an opportunity to help prepare people to accept other changes that will be coming. Wow. I just, they're not even hiding this anymore. I far. know it. I know so they're arrogant. I, yeah, and I'm fed up with it too. I mean, I, I'm, I look, I've already said, said on, on, on some of my Facebook lives for Battery Coalition, I am not taking the vaccine. I may never fly again. I may have to drive all over the country to do my evangelization work, which I will do if that's the case. Um, I know in Canada, they're, they're saying that they're already writing up in Canada that if when the vaccine becomes uh, becomes widespread and they can use it now, they will they will start uh, checking you. You will not be able to travel from province to province in Canada without proof of vaccination. You can see them trying to do that state by state here, if possible. The American people and people throughout the world, good Christian people, all right, have got to dig deep and understand that God does not want us to live in this kind of fear. Use precautions. Use reasonable, proven precautions. But scientific back and forth, up and down, and stuff that doesn't even... I mean, Father, you got in trouble, if I'm not mistaken, for putting out an article about a life site, on a LifeSite News, uh, on the LifeSite News page, about a doctor from Canada who right. doubled down and said, this is only creating more problems with all right. these men. I was, I was uh, put in Facebook jail for a half hour 
they said 30 days and then they changed their mind or something happened, but yeah, uh, somebody, some uh, algorithm, uh, somebody got in there. Life and, news article. Yeah. But, yeah. The, but the doctor was clear about that. It, he's, he's one more of the many medical professionals who've come out and said, this is being twisted and manipulated. Yeah. And I think you and I agree and would we'll be very clear with our audience. If I may say this for you, father, we do not believe that COVID is, is a hoax that there's, there is something there. Oh, yeah. People do get sick from it. It's causing problems, but it is not nearly at the level that they're saying. Right. And all these so-called remedies that they're talking about with regards to six foot here and mask here and all this are not consistent. Right. And, and we should not be doing these things out of fear or out of this is the end all be all. Right. I still don't understand why, they're, why these doctors who are so smart aren't telling us we should all just try to get healthier, make our immune system stronger for this sickness and any other sickness out there. Instead, the only answer seems to be social distancing, washing your hands, masking, and wait for the salvation of the vaccine. Right. And that's supposed to be what's going to solve the problem. And Father, this whole thing, I believe what these reset guys are talking about, this is all preparing us for much more to come. And if we don't stand the ground now, we have to be thinking, where we are we going to have the courage to stand the ground later when things are much more serious yeah i was telling you earlier today that i'm getting a puppy soon yeah and, uh, but what am i gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna train the puppy and i might even take it to one of those training schools right doug that's what's happening right now we're we're like being we're tr being trained <laughs> like puppies that's it right we yeah. are we're being trained like puppies and and uh, you will do this you will do that and 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 everybody's going around going, oh yeah okay okay but we're, we're, we're being trained to conform. And That's get, what we, this is all about. And we get scolded. We right. get scolded, don't we, if we don't do it. Right. The chilling effect, uh, the cancel culture is working. That's why I said we're, we're, we're entering into a time of persecution and martyrdom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most of that's going to see its way as white martyrdom. But we need heroes right now like we've never before. I mean, I we need heroes. You know, Doug, I was watching um, uh, Fox the other day, and uh, they had uh, soldiers that were sitting around in a circle just talking. I can't remember what they called the name of the show, show but they talked about on there that there is a warrior gene, one of the guys said. But but what did he say? And, and, and they pointed out that one of the guys there, I think he lost his leg, and yet he wanted to go back into the fray, Okay. And and they they know that it's tough and it's hard and they they might die, but they have to do it. They have to do it they, because they know this is right and good and noble uh, that they do this. Doug, we need that warrior gene. All of us do. Mm -hmm. We that we're willing to put everything on the line. Uh, and you know, I I I I cr I come right up to that line a lot, and I know that I'm making uh, a lot of bishops nervous. For for instance. Uh, by the, the stand I'm taking. But what am I saying, though? You know, it was, my good friend, Father Altman, it was his birthday yesterday. Um, uh, what, are we, what are we saying? We're not going to be bullied, okay? Yeah. We're not going to sit down and shut up. We're not, we're not going to just kowtow to you because you're, you're going to give us the chilling. You might write a letter to my bishop. You know what I've, I used to get nervous about those now, now Doug. You know what I do now? Hmm. <laughs> That's what I do because it's a badge of honor, okay? Yeah. Realize Jesus said, if the world hates you, realize it hated me first. Right. And I, I was saying, you could put the L-Y at the end of that. If the worldly hate you, realize they hated me first, okay? So we're not going to be all that popular with people who are mortal enemies to the Bible, okay, to the will of God. Right. You know, I, I see this movement that's going on right now, and it's been it's taken control of the Democratic Party, but uh, it, it, this is not the Democratic Party of the 1960s. This has come, become something completely different, where you open up a Bible, okay, and, it, and, and the Word of God says, do this. This movement says, okay, because you said do this, I am going to do the exact opposite. That, that's where they're at right now, okay? And they're turning to us saying, don't you dare stand against this because we might write a letter to your bishop or we might do this or, you know, we'll cancel you. You know, yeah. the chilling effect, you know, 
It's, and, and it's working, Doug. It's working. Most of a, a vast majority of us priests and bishops are just going, okay, okay, okay. Okay, whatever you say, we won't, we won't trigger any snowflakes, okay? Because we want peace and unity. That's the thing that stinks too. All of this, this, uh, this four years of being bullies, and now they think they're in power. They go, oh, now let's be unified, right? Mm. Let's, <laughs> let's, and, and they call, and they call uh, the guy that they they did a Russian collusion impeachment, you know, uh, uh, just twenty four seven. Uh, defaming of him for over four years, and then they turn and say, "Look how divisive he is." Yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, so he's, it, he's causing the problems because he wants he wants certain things investigated. Yeah, you yeah, know, and it, as Father Frank said at the beginning of the show, President Trump, you know, and he's I think he's made this clear, and Father Frank knows him personally to know this is true. He does not see this as much about himself as us, the people, right. and the country, oh, yeah. and freedom. In yep. general, the Constitution, yeah, you know, and in I got to say one other thing here. Um, I know we're getting close to the end, but I got to say one more thing. All, anybody who starts, who continues with this ridiculous idea that you cannot be talking about politics and religion, it, just give it a rest and right. stop with that pathetic, right. disgusting attitude. Trying to save babies' lives is not political. Exactly. Okay? Trying and to people, save the nuclear family is not political. Exactly. Okay? And people's yeah. well-being, people's futures, people's livelihoods. Right. Right. You know, and, and, and this great reset idea of by 2030, you'll own nothing and be happy. Well, that contradicts what the church has always taught, that it's okay. It can be good for, for someone to own property. It's what you do with it, of course, that makes it right or wrong. But you've got, you, got, you can't just live a life of, no, no, we don't have to own anything. Look. You, who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna have control over all of this then i mean yeah. think for a moment if we don't own it someone else has control they say we're gonna rent it from who who's right. making these decisions of what we're gonna eat what we're gonna own when what's gonna make us happy all right and that god is not part of this whole picture who does not see that everything that they are preaching and throwing at us is like you said father uh, the bible says well we're gonna do the opposite then it's it's thy own will be done Right. The first commandment of the satanic Bible. Right. This is something that is so in our face, so not hidden. And Archbishop Vigano was way ahead of the curve when he wrote letters out there about this. And he wrote the letter to President Trump talking about the Great Reset, talking about the globalist movement, talking about all of this. And so, you know, I just want to, you know, make another pitch to implore all of our audience and anybody watching or listening right now. Dig deep, pray hard, fast, get to the sacraments. Get in the state of grace so you can become that mighty warrior, as you always say, Father, yes. in that mighty power of God. But do not capitulate. Don't buckle to this pressure. If we do, this will only get worse, yep. as all the indications show. We yep. cannot buckle we, to this pressure. We need the children of light to get lit up. We need Amen. heroes, Doug. We need heroes. Amen. Should we end with that? Yeah, I think all that's right. yeah, great point. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. All right. We need thanks, heroes, Doug. God bless you. God bless you.